Hello everyone, I hope everyone can hear me. Welcome, welcome. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much for coming to our workshop today. My name is Michelle, I'm the Community Associate at Muji Canada, and today we have our The Art of Doodling Valentine's Day Edition workshop with Alicia. Before we get started, I do have a few announcements. So, uh, as always, if you miss any part of this workshop today, please don't worry, we'll, we, ha we will have a recording available on our YouTube channel, which you can see after this workshop. So if you need to go back and look at anything, then it'll be available there for your viewing. As always, as well, if you have any questions, please ask them in the Q&A box so that we can see them. We'll try to answer as many as we can, so please be patient with us. Thank you. Uh, I know that in our itinerary, we did have a 10 minute break scheduled. We think we're going to actually minimize that to about five minutes. Uh, so it'll still be at around 7.15. However, we'll probably jump right back into the workshop at around 7.20. We just want to make sure that everyone will um, be able to rest their hands during the workshop and not go too overboard on the doodling. Um, 
uh, also after the workshop, we'll have a follow-up email, we'll, which will have a list of all the products that Alicia will use today, as well as any other um, items that you might want to download, uh, just like her uh, worksheets, which I'll also link into the chat if you haven't downloaded those yet. And yeah, with that, I think that's everything from me. So I will now introduce you to Alicia. If I can get you to unmute, we can get started. Hi, Alicia. Oh. Hi, Michelle. How are you? Doing great. How are you? I'm so I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited too. This is great. Hi, everyone watching. Um, thanks so much for having me, Michelle and Moody. Yeah, of course. It's nice to uh, work with you again. We actually worked with Alicia, I think, two years ago in Muji Atrium doing live calligraphy. So it's great to have her back with us uh, to do something actually really new. We've never done a doodling workshop. So this is really exciting. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. <clears throat> I'm so yeah, excited. I this is my first in with beer ready. Awesome. Okay, great. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. So hi everyone. Um, my name's Alicia. Um, I hope you guys downloaded the worksheets for today. There's about 20 pages or so. Um, we'll go through all of them together. Hopefully, we'll get through a lot of them. And yeah, I hope you guys got your pens ready and um any kind of coloring tools you want, if you want to color, um, these are the Muji coloring pencils. They're really beautiful with the with the wooden <clears throat> with the wooden barrel. So I'll be coloring with those, and I have some markers and stuff too. So um, if you have a pencil, that's really good for um, just erasing if you need to <clears throat> to kind of make some adjustments. And I have just normal um, pens and markers as well. So any pens and you know writing tools you have is great. Um, so yeah, let's jump, uh, jump right in. So, um, yeah, we'll be learning some simple doodles, just like step-by-step -step doodles. We'll also have the ability to kind of, um, create your own mindful doodles, make up your own patterns, as well as, um, create your own Valentine's cards. So that's really exciting. And, um, I hope you guys love it. All right. So, um, <clears throat> the first page here is just kind of going through the really good things about doodling, um, Doodling is really good for, you know, your mind, body, and soul. It's great for being creative and um, not having any, you know, um, kind of idea of what's going to come out. You're just kind of doodling and, um, you know, using lines and patterns and just kind of working your hand and seeing what comes from it. So it's really good to kind of just slow down and just create for the sake of creating, um, <clears throat> getting in touch with your inner self and working from a place of no judgment, only self-love. So when we're going through these, um, don't, don't think about, you know, if it's good or if it's not, that's not what it's about, really. It's just about letting go, relaxing, getting in touch with yourself and um, creating something straight from your heart. So hopefully that comes through with um, your Valentine's Day cards, too. And um, I have some cutout um, cards here as well. And, and yeah, I'll also show you guys how to kind of cut your own cards, use the scoring machine, but we'll do that towards the end. So hi everyone. Oh, nice to see you guys. Oh yeah, I teach I teach calligraphy classes and I really miss them so much. So this is really nice. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so let's go to the next page. So um, so there's some step-by-step -step, um, worksheets here. We'll just kind of get um, get your hand working, um, you know, work up your your um, muscles and do some little little doodles. So let's see how um, this works. Perfect. All right. Thanks so much for coming. All right. So <clears throat> these little doodles are a perfect way to decorate your cards. Um, and you're just gonna start with the gray area over here. So we'll just kind of do the first little step for the daisy. And the daisy is a really great um, simple doodle. So you're just gonna start with a little circle in the middle and then add um, one petal. And you're gonna kind of keep that petal um, right in the center. Then you're gonna add right beside it two other little petals, just like that. And then after you have those kind of three going, you just kind of keep going around and just keep filling the whole, the whole circle with, <clears throat> with these petals. And they're all gonna be basically around the same size. Um, something that helps too, if um, you're having uh, trouble is to just draw like a little circle with a pencil on the outer side. And then what you can do is draw your circle in the middle and then start working around and just reaching from the circle to the inner part 
of the flower. So this is a really fun kind of cute way to make a cute little daisy and you can color it in whatever colors you want and maybe just kind of color in the circle there too, make it bigger. All right. So that's one of my favorite ones and you can erase the circle after. Oop, shaking a little bit. And there you go. Now it's all the same kind of space around. All right, so another one I really love is these little um, tiny leaves. These are really simple too. So you're just gonna write, draw a little curvy line. And then from the bottom, you're gonna draw like a little half moon kind of shape, like almost like an eye, one side of the eyelid. And then after that, you're just gonna connect it, make another part of the eye. So it's kind of, you're finishing it up. Then on the other side, you're gonna start a little bit up from there with another leaf and complete that one as well. Oh, I did over here. <laughs> and then you're just gonna follow that up the whole um, leaf here. And you're just gonna kind of make it like a ladder. So one is over here, one is a little bit higher on the other side, the other one's a little bit higher and so on and so forth. You can also do it where they're touching as well. There's so many different ways you can do this and feel free to add your own um, spins and touches to these doodles. That's part of what makes doodling so fun is making it all your own. And then what happens is at the top here, you're just going to draw a little, a little leaf to finish it off right there at the top. That's a cute little vine. And these are really great for um, decorating your cards. You can add them to your lettering and they'll just elevate um, whatever design you're doing a little bit more. So with this one, we're gonna start with just a curved line and then add another kind of similarly curved line right over there. And then on the other side, same thing, same type of curved line to connect it. And then down the middle, we're just gonna add a nice straight line to give it a little bit more detail and a little bit more texture. These leaves remind me of rosemary. So I like to kind of call them my little rosemary bundles. All right. And now we're just gonna follow the same type of stepladder approach and just go all the way up and add that extra line right at the end of it. So you're gonna go around one, stop right there, down to the bottom, stop there, and then straight up again. And these look really nice when you color them in, especially with the two-tone of the leaves. All right. And then same thing with the top, the top line, you might have to draw it a little bit more out to extend it. So kind of uh, extend that, that line up a little bit and then just finish off with one last leaf right at the top. There you go. All right, those ones are really cute. Um, is everybody watching okay? Is everything, um, the sound is all right so far? I hope, uh, I hope everybody's doing okay so far. I can hear you perfectly fine. <laughs> oh, great. Okay, perfect. <laughs> oh my gosh. The stars I always have a problem with. So I'm very excited to see how you do them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just learned these stars like about a year ago and I always drew them, you know, the regular way. Mm -hmm. Just like that. But when I when I saw these, I just thought they were a lot cuter and different. So we're going to start with an, um, just kind of, if you look at the little dot at the top, you can... Um, use one as your reference if you want, and just draw a line all the way straight up to um, the top. And it's going to be really curved, a really, really curved line. And the more curved it is, the more shape your, your star will have. Okay, so then you're going to basically mirror image that line and do it exactly the same on the other side. So as, as close as you can get. Sometimes you may have to go back and add it in. Um, here, let me zoom in a little bit more. There we go. All right, so we have those two pointy curves. Now we're gonna add the same thing right underneath. There we go. And this line should basically more or less lighten up to the one on the bottom. All right, and then for the last one, we're just gonna connect this piece with this piece. So we're gonna add that, that curvy line, and then you can go in and kind of fix up. If you need to fix it up, you can make it a little bit thicker. And you can even add 
kind of like a outline. Okay, I'm not going to color the whole thing in, but you can kind of change it around. Sometimes I have to add a little bit more to it, but it looks kind of nice like that. I love these stars. They're good to make um, really small too. You just go one, two, three, four. You got a cute little star. Then you can do a little tiny one just like that. And these are cute. All right. So the star is one of my faves. And this one's a cute little one too. This, um, the bee. So we're going to start with um, an oval. Start with a nice little oval. And you want it to be more oval than circular because you need room for your little bits over there. So then you're gonna add a little stinger. So add that stinger right in there. And then we're gonna add like butterfly wings almost. So you're gonna be one loop and then start right over there at that spot you ended and just do another loop exactly the same as that one. And we're gonna do that on the other side too. One and two. Awesome. All right, now for the stripes. So you can add the stripes in and just make sure that this stripe where his face is going to be, if you want to add the face, um, isn't, is, is white. So you can add that, that black um, lines um, for his eyes. So just going to draw those, those lines in and also just give him a little antennas and two little eyes. Perfect. And then you can color in these, these um, stripes. And you can color in the, the white parts yellow too. And this here should be black too, I think. All right. Um, and then if you want to, you can add a little trail. So actually start from this side. Now you're just gonna add a little dotted line in his flight pattern. So you can do a little curve. And this is a really fun, detail to add on cards because you can make it wherever you want and you can add it as a border or underneath some words and lettering. All right, so there's some little doodles. I hope that was a good little warm up. Um, there we go. All right, how's everyone? Did, was that enough time to go through that one? I'm gonna just go to uh, the next one. Awesome, all right. I'm seeing good, thank you, Giselle. All right, so. Um, here's another really cute little doodle, especially for Valentine's Day cards. I love scattering these around the card and putting your little um, messages in them. Um, so let's start with um, the heart. So <clears throat> it's a really good idea to have two little dots where you're going to start your heart and then end your heart as well. So that way you um, don't, <clears throat> don't make it a little bit off and then your, your whole heart is off center. So let's start right here and put a little dot right there and just follow that line and make it really nice and big, like an elephant ear almost, like a really nice full heart. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And it's not always gonna be perfect. It's gonna be imperfect, but you know how it is. All right, so now we're gonna add the little um, 3D element. So this just adds a little rounded area right there. And then you're gonna start from there and curve down and add that extra dimension right there. And then this is a nice straight line. There you go. And then you can add whatever you want in the middle. So let's just do it again in a big, um, a little larger. I use my Muji markers. Um, so I'm gonna start right there and then end right there. So go on. And two. And then I'm going to put um, a little message. And then we'll put our shadow right there. This one goes out the same kind of angle and rounds out. And then this straightens right at the bottom like that. And then you can always um, do a little 
sorry, I always move my paper around. It always just depends what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm going to add a little shadow here. For, so for the side of the, um, the, uh, the heart, you just add some straight lines and it gives it a nice little bit of dimension, a little bit like a drop shadow. So just parallel lines all the way up. And I'm following this line on the bottom. And this uh, is a nice way to add some detail without fully coloring it in. Here we go. And then the same thing on this side, just the same um, straight lines. There you go. Cute. Then you can always color that in. <clears throat> That's how to draw candy hearts. That was easy. All right, now let's go to the next one. How to draw a paper plane. <clears throat> paper planes are so fun to draw. Um, and you can draw this you can follow along and draw it or um, just draw it on your own paper as well. I didn't even go through these. Um, if you have your Muji notebooks, these are really great to practice with. You can just write on these really beautiful, smooth pieces of paper and just do your design on there. So if you want, you can do that. I think I'm gonna do that for this one. So let's just leave that right there, okay. All right. So for the paper airplane, we're gonna start with like this, this angle, this uh, triangle, and just kind of go like this, one and two, just like that. So then we're gonna connect these lines, but make one go up um, more than halfway, and the other one is less than halfway. So one's gonna go more than halfway, and this one just a little bit less, like that. <clears throat> All right, so, so on this side, that's more, line, we're going to draw a perfectly perfect triangle, nice perfect triangle on all sides. All right, so then the next step is connecting this piece to this piece right there. Perfect. And then we're going to take the point of the paper plane and connect it to this spot, spot right over here. So it's a nice straight line all the way down. And then one more spot line all the way down. Okay. Here we go. And I'm gonna also add in the shadow that we did on the other page. So I'm gonna start on this side and just do some uh, really short little lines just running down the whole, um, <clears throat> the whole length of it. There we go. And then you can also add that cute little trail and this can be a nice way to decorate your card too. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna start from here and just Add your dashed lines wherever you want them to go. You can go all the way around. It could even make a little heart. Let's see if we can do that. There we go. And you can color that in. I kind of think I want to just color it in to see how it'll look. I'm going to use pink and purple and, <clears throat> sorry, <laughs> red and pink. That's that's not right. So I'm going to use the darker colors for the inside and because that's like the shadowy part and the pink. Sometimes just coloring in your doodle is the most satisfying part. It's kind of like your own little, little coloring book. If you're out of the lines a little bit, that's all right. I'm going to color that in too. Cute. So that would totally be a really cute um, card. All right. That was, that's a really cute one. I love it. Okay. <clears throat> so that's how to draw a paper plane. Um, let's go to the next one. How to draw a rose. This is one of my favorite ones. Um, <clears throat> there are a few more steps to them. Um, oh gosh, okay, so that is 11, 12, and 13. Oops, these are missing. I'm sorry about that. You just write them in yourself. Okay, so I'm gonna use a smaller pen for this one. If you guys have a thicker sized pen, it might not work as well. This one is a bit thicker um, than, than a fine liner. So I'm gonna use a thinner, the thinner pen for this one. And I'm gonna just do it right over here. So the first step is to start with a little, 
circle. And it's going to be a bit of an irregular circle. Um, the next step is to add a little kind of um, like a bubble. Oh yeah, okay, yes, I'll zoom in. Here, I'll zoom into I'll zoom into the one I'm drawing. All right. Oh no problem. I was wondering if maybe that would be better zoomed in. Okay, perfect. All right, so the, the little rows. So we're gonna do a little irregular circle and that's gonna be the middle of our rows. And then a little other irregular type of circle. They're kind of called S-curves. So for an S-curve, you wanna make sure that it's not a rounded nice circle like that. It's a little bit of a wiggly circle, right? It's a wiggly curve and a wiggly S curve. So we're gonna add in the wiggly shapes. The wigglier, the better. Okay, so we did our one leaf. Now we're gonna do our other little wiggly leaf. And then one more to kind of complete them. So that's the inner part of the rose right there. Perfect. Okay, so the next layer is gonna be a little bit bigger. So we're gonna kind of go straight out like that and add some more of those weird little squiggly, squiggly petals. And just make sure that they're around the same size because they're all on the same layer of, of, the, of the leaf, of the um, flower. Okay, so one more to connect this side with that side. Perfect. All right, so that second layer is done. Now we're gonna go to the, the third layer, um, step seven. So if you add little kind of straight little juts like that, those are really good to make it get the, uh, effect of the leaf even if you want to um, give it a little corner you know roses have those corners sometimes you can add that um, I'm just going to go around and add this layer in two and then three so this layer is done and there's these are always going to turn out a little bit different every time you do it um, okay so that is complete I finished the whole layer I'm just going to go around that one once more and then you can add in your leaves. So the leaves kind of come out, you can add one, you can add two, and this one I ended up adding five. So I'm gonna just add the same amount. So I put one on one side, one kind of perpendicular to it. Um, and then I'll just add some little bunches beside it, some smaller leaves, one right there, one right there, and one right there. All right, so now on step 12, right over there, the leaf is finished. I mean, sorry, the flower is finished. Now we're just gonna add in these little details and this is totally optional. You can leave it like this, color it in, it'll look really great. Um, <clears throat> but the, just add some, some little details in if you want to make yours a little bit more detailed. So we're just gonna add a line straight down the middle of all of these leaves, straight down. Just like that. Just grab a drink. And then we're gonna draw some lines um, going from the outer part of the line um, leaf right inside to the middle. These are gonna be equal kind of lines just with a bit of a curve to them because leaves have a natural curve to them. So adding a curve just gives it a little bit more shape instead of looking so flat. Just give it a little bit of a curve. And this is why the smaller pen is good for these little details. And just kind of add in all these little lines. And while we're, we're just doing these little details, it's really, a good time to remember it's so how mindful it really is and really just get into the zone. Forget about everything else you have to do and just kind of focus on relaxing. All right, so the leaves look pretty good. If you wanna give it a little outline just to kind of make the outside of the line leaf a little bolder, that usually is what I do too. And then it stands out a bit more. All right, and 
And then we're just gonna add the little tiny leaves in the middle lines. So all the lines that you add are gonna kind of go into the middle of the, 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 the rows. So the leaves, the lines have to kind of reach in and kind of all point towards the center. That way it gives the illusion of the petals curling and kind of forming into the middle where it's all kind of starts. So it's gonna add a few of these lines and you can add some little dots kind of from coming from the top, some little dashes. Um, and then we'll just add a few more into the middle, not too much. And you can add as much or as little as you prefer. There you go. And if you want, again, just kind of go over the whole thing. Sometimes that helps polish it all up. There you go. Pretty little garden rose. I can't wait for the flowers to come back. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So that one was <clears throat> pretty, um, was probably the hardest one. So that's a good way to kind of work into getting, getting doodling in, uh, getting used to doodling, doing the step-by-step -step things are really, really helpful. They're, they're so great. Um, <clears throat> and we can add these to our cards later. But for um, the next page here is um, going into different types of doodling exercises. So we're going to kind of just loosen up a little, practice some line work, some pattern work, and um, find your own style of doodling as well while, while we're at it. So for these doodling exercises, we're just going to just kind of fill in um, the box over here with whatever kind of design you want. <clears throat> over here are some really good ones you can start practicing. They're just <clears throat> simple hatches. So whenever you're hatching, you're just adding the lines um, in a straight parallel line to each other like that. Um, and this is a really good practice to just get your hands ready and in the motion for doodling, <clears throat> for drawing and Give yourself um, a simple task that is really a satisfying exercise. A little warm up. All right, so I did that one. And for this one, I'm gonna do it a little bit wider. So sometimes maybe I'll wanna fill in my, my little patterns with a wider line. So I'm gonna try to keep each line the same distance away from the next. And you get a totally different look with this one. And if you want, you can give them a little color in too, that way. I would color it in better than that, but just to show you guys, then you get a totally different little pattern. So that could be a pattern that you use for your designs. Um, so this is just a bigger area. Let's just dry that with, uh, I'm just gonna use a bigger marker here and just see the difference. So this is a lot thicker and this one's a bit further apart. So it all depends on your writing tool and what you're using that can tell you what you can do with it. There we go. And for this one, I'm gonna do a bit of like a dashed line, just like that. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. And this is just practicing drawing parallel lines this is a really great practice um, that will help when you're making your own patterns. Just getting used to drawing um, in a straight line like that. There we go, so that's a cute little one. She'll probably add a little one right there. All right. <clears throat> So let's do, let's go back to the thin one, but this one, and this is the opposite way. So sometimes, you know, you might need to go the opposite way than how you normally draw. So this can sometimes be a bit more of a challenge. Um, so I'm just gonna do the same thing as this box shows. Just kind of draw those parallel lines 
one down to the next one. All right. So you can fill in more of those, get your hands kind of ready. Um, you can also fill these circles in. So what we're gonna do is just fill these in with whatever pattern of lines that you, you feel you feel like doing. So for this one, I'm just going to just do what we just did, but in the circle. So it's a little bit of a different challenge. It's because you start in a different spot and, and finish in a different spot too. And something we can also do is called cross hatching where you then go the opposite way. So we did here um, one way and then the other way. So for this, I'm just gonna combine those two together. And so you get a checkerboard as well. There you go. All right. So I'm gonna stay away from the, the lines now and get more into the wavy pattern. So let's do a little bit of a wave right there. I'm just gonna follow that wave for the whole rest of the circle. It's like so, keep a equal distance between each line as much as you can, and then just follow with the same line right over here. This looks cool if you color it in too, it has a nice kind of, kind of rotated effect. So for this one, I'm just gonna do um, a curved line. So this will make it look like, the, like it's a ball, like it's 3D and just kind of curve the same um, angle of this curve the whole way down. I'm just gonna fill up these circles with, with whatever kind of pattern of lines you kind of feel like. I'm gonna do a bit of a like a triangle with this one. So that one I'm just gonna follow through. So it can be a little tricky, but remember no judgment, just doodling. <laughs> like a little arrowhead pattern. And <clears throat> for this one, I'm gonna do some polka dots, why not? Polka dots, little tiny circles. And don't worry if they're not perfect because you can always go in and color them in. And where you put them is totally up to you. You can kind of stagger them. So kind of draw one line and then one line of circles and then draw the the second line of circles in between these two. And fill these in. For left-handers, you can totally do, um, sorry, I'm just looking in the Q and A's. The left-handers, you can totally do the exact same thing. You just might wanna keep your paper more straight. I, as a right-handed, um, writer, I usually write like that to the side, but with the left-handed, you might want to keep it completely straight and give your hand enough room to, um, to maneuver your fingers on this side as you're writing. But, okay, so. All right, so I'm gonna do a little bit of a, kind of a fun little pattern over here. Oh, no problem. Okay, so I did done. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Oh, no problem, Laura. Uh, Giselle, what if we had swirls? You can add cute little swirls like this too, actually. I think I like this one better. So we're gonna start the swirl here and just do a cute little curl and do it from the outside into the middle like that. So if any of you guys have tried Zentangle before, it's very similar kind of style, um, philosophy, just filling in little patterns and small sections, um, which makes it a lot easier to kind of do because it's lots of little small sections. Um, what was I gonna do for this one? Let's do uh, like a wave like this. All right. So you can fill these in circles, these other circles in too. Um, I'm just gonna keep it with the same um, 
patterns. Um, one of my favorite patterns, I'm gonna do it on these bigger ones, is what I like call like a scallop design. So I'm just gonna start with like a half circle and just fill those half circles in with them um, smaller and smaller inside the circle itself. And then you're gonna start on this side, just like that. And then do the same thing to that one. We're just gonna do the same thing over and over until we fill up the whole circle. You can start from the bottom here if you want, or you can start further up. Yes, Hariden, yes, you can totally make zigzags. I'll do zigzags right over here just to show you. So I like to do zigzags. One, two, three, four. You could even do like, and just fill that whole section. That's a really fun one actually. And a little bit of imperfection makes it cooler. Um, anonymous attendee, I see your question here. What kind of patterns do you recommend for journaling? You know, it all depends on what your kind of style is for your journal. Um, I really like just focusing on lines lines and dots that's a really simple place to start and it's a really good starting point because from there you can further evolve um, your style and sometimes it just comes out naturally so that's a really fun part about just letting yourself go and and freely doodling yes you can definitely make little squares i think that would look really really cute i'm going to try that one out right after this one and you just kind of keep going and see where your mind takes you. you. You'll be surprised at how many patterns you come up with. And I'll just keep that like that. That looks kind of cool. Maybe I'll just finish it. All right. There we go. And let's make little squares too. That was a cute um, answer. That was a cute suggestion. Um, we could do like little diamonds. So one, some will be bigger, some will be smaller. It's kind of just like a square on an angle. And because this one has some white space, I can fit in some little circles. So we're gonna add some little polka dots too. And just fill the space in how you want. Those some fun ideas. Let's go to the next page and there's, you'll see some more ideas um, for your mindful doodling. So for the next few pages, there's these doodle banks. So you can fill these up. Um, there was a question here. Do we make our own? Yeah, you can make your own on this page. Um, there's a few other pages too, so I'll go through them. So there's that one, which are have some smaller circles. Um, and this one has small circles too, but this is a bit of a starter page. So I've done some doodles up here for you guys that combine different types of the patterns together. And down here, um, there's just one line in each circle. So it can kind of start you off with that, um, with some ideas. And then the bottom ones you can use to make your own as well. So that's a really fun one. I'm gonna try to go through these ones, um, but just to show you guys, then there's also these bigger circles, some hearts, and then some bigger hearts. So the hearts are really, really fun to doodle in. Um, <clears throat> I'll just go through this page first. And we'll just fill in our own, I'll just do a couple of these. So if you wanted to kind of combine two different, um, Oh yes, for sure, you can see the finished page, here you go. Actually, I'll just do it on this page. So for these ones, um, if you wanted to start with one kind of line, just like that, 
then you can kind of split your design and split your patterns off into two. So, or into however many you want. So there's two sections right now. So I'm gonna do one pattern on one side and just do some lines, simple lines. Can't, can't go wrong with lines. And then there you go. And then the other side, I'm going to follow along with this wave line that I made to start off with. <clears throat> Oh, hi, Sana. Um, you can use any pen you want. I really, um, these Micron fine liners are really good. Um, even just the pencils, um, pencil, uh, where's my pencil? Um, if you have like the, like a mechanical pencil or even just like a marker, um, even just a pen, normal pen. Just an ink pen. I'm gonna do the do it with this side so you can see. It's a smaller line, but there's so many different ways you can different tools you can use. But the thinner the thinner the pen, um, the more detailed and smaller kind of details you can get. All right. So there's some there's some ideas for you guys, and let's start. Um, let's do one more of these. So I'm gonna do. Um, do the same thing with this one. So one side is, oh, thank you, Giselle. Look at that. I didn't even realize that. That's amazing. Okay, I'm gonna use the purple Muji marker. <laughs> thank you, Giselle. Okay. So the one side of the Muji pen, that's great. They're double-sided. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to use the, oh, that's a really nice tip. Just draw some some lines that way. Then I'm going to do some polka dots. Why not? I'm glad that you discovered something new, Alicia. I'm so sorry <laughs> I didn't tell you. <laughs> I know, it's like, oh. It's so nice that um, you gifted these for the workshop. <laughs> yes, they're dual tip. I thought that wow. they'd be great for like really thin things like this. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Yeah, if um, That's cool. we, I see that Ingrid's also saying that she uses the gel ink 0.5. We also have the 0.38. So we have a lot of thin options. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, you know, I like, <laughs> you are a Muji fan, Giselle. You know your stuff. <laughs> yeah, the thinner ones I say are, are, are a little bit more, you can maneuver them better. You can, um, coloring in with the thicker one is 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 pretty good. But drawing is awesome with these 0 0.5 tip. That's my favorite size. And you just have, have some fun relaxing and just filling in these smaller details. All right, so I like, like I said, I spin around my page. <laughs> and it's gonna add some kind of funky little waves over here. And at that point, you can even add things inside, inside the lines themselves. You can um, color them in. So I'm going to do this one right over here. I'm going to just make little lines like that, tiny little, little lines, and then color them in. You can do that, or you can just color in the whole line. These markers are so nice to color with. Wow, I love them. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> no problem. I'm glad that you enjoyed them. <laughs> They're so amazing. Oh my gosh. Have such a good feel to them. All right. So I'm just gonna color that one in too because it just goes better. All right. So as you can see, you can do so many different things with these nice little patterns. Oh yeah, Ingrid, you know, Sharpie is not um, my favorite either, just because they do bleed a lot. They bleed through the page and, you know, you, you have to have a really thick paper and sometimes you just don't have it. All right, so I'm gonna do a few of these hearts because they're so cute. I'm gonna do them with the pink marker. Oh, oh no. 
Sorry, guys. Just give me two seconds as I switch my battery pack. I thought that was going to happen. And I have another one ready to go. It's 7.15-ish. If you want to take a five-minute break or so and fix that up, then we can definitely... That's perfect. Um, yeah, perfect timing. Back after the five minutes. So we're just going to take a really quick break, everyone. I will play some music and then uh, we'll come back with... Um, at around, let's do 722-ish. Yeah, yeah. 22, 25. We can go to 725 since we started the break a little late. So yeah, we'll see you in just a bit, everyone. Awesome. See you guys.
That was perfect timing for the song. <laughs> I'm just gonna ask you to unmute Alicia. Uh, we can get right back into it if we're ready to go. Perfect. I'm awesome. Back in. I hope everyone had a nice break. <laughs> we can definitely <laughs> jump right back into it. Uh, yeah, whenever you're ready, Alicia. Awesome, great. All right, so maybe you guys had time to take a little break or stretch out your hands a little bit. Um, sometimes they can get crampy, so remember to stretch. Um, or if you just continue to doodle, that's amazing too. I would love to see your work after. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna do a few doodles in these heart doodle banks. And a doodle bank is a really good reference you can keep for any time you wanna reference, you know, um, some of your patterns that you've come up with. So I'm just gonna start again with some lines and fill up the whole kind of corner with that. Let me zoom in a bit. Yes, the music was so nice. That was so great. I was thinking of playing music, but I'm not sure how it would work. All right, so I'm just gonna add some perpendicular lines just like that. And just gonna add some waves now. And this really can be any design and um, pattern that you'd like. It's just some, some ideas you can grab from. And you can color these in, you can draw them with black and color them in or color them with a the pencil crayon with these colored pens, that would look really cute too. It's just random stuff, you know, just filling it in. And you can color in the circles maybe. Looks 
it's kind of like hair. One more. And these can be for, you can use them on your um, Valentine's Day cards too. Cute. So this is a, another little way you can do it. You can separate your heart into sections and then kind of fill them in that way. So the idea is just to kind of fill in the smaller areas of surface area basically and fill it all in with the different patterns. So it kind of looks like patchwork or something after. Lines are very simple and great to use. You can do a little scallop line here. And kind of thicken up those lines. And what should I put there? Let's see. So, you know, sometimes it looks good with some white space. You know, you can color that in if you want. Let me find where it's purple. Colored in with my Muji pencil crayons. And sometimes the uh, effect between pencil crayon or any kind of coloring medium you have with your pen just works really nicely. Oh, that's awesome that you're enjoying. That's great. Um, I'm not sure what the song was. Maybe Michelle could let us know. Um, it's it's a Muji, Muji song. Those are tracks that we play in our stores, but I can definitely find which exact track name that is, and I will send it to you. <laughs> oh, that would be awesome. Yes, thank you. I will definitely listen to that again. So I'm going to just move over to the larger hearts and I'm using a bit of a thicker marker. So when you have a bigger space, sometimes you can use that thicker marker. So we're just adding a bit of a geometric pattern here and I'm going to follow along this line that I've made. Oh, I'm so glad you're enjoying it. Great. Oh, that's so nice. It's, I think doodling is a really great thing right now for getting creative you know, spending your time in a productive way for your, you know. Um, I'm just adding these little, these little dots. And these are a cute little embe embellishment to add to your designs too. Gonna add a little line there. Oh, thank you, Adabel. That's so sweet. Thank you. I've been drawing, honestly, I'm, let's see now at least 15 years in like doodling Zentangle style. I'm in my early thirties. So it's been since I was a late teenager. And I would just spend, I'm the oldest cousin, I would spend all of our family get togethers just with markers and pens. And I would bring so many, so many of my stationary stuff to with my little cousins and we would play and learn how to doodle together. So that was really cute. And I love just sharing it with other people. It's so fun. And everyone's work turns out different, which is just the most uh, amazing part about it. All right, so I'm just gonna add a bit of a, an extra line to that to match my marker that I'm drawing. With. And if you have to turn your paper all around, don't worry about it. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta be comfortable. All right, oops, there you go. So I'm kind of happy with that. I think with some colors, that would look really good. So I'm gonna try coloring it in um, with my pencil crayon. This is a nice way to use um, pencil crayons. If you get two similar colors, um, you can do a nice little gradient. So I'm gonna start with the lighter color and just color it in. And you're gonna kind of lighten the pressure towards the end there. So kind of like let it fade out there. 
you can totally leave it like that. I'm gonna go in with a darker color and do the same thing with the red and give this one more of like a curve so that the heart has a kind of a spherical shape to it. And if you colored it in straight, you would get a like it would look more flat. If you wanted to give it a little bit of a dimension, just give it a little bit of that rounded coloring in and just blend it in right into the pink that we have kind of like a two-tone thing going on. And then you can go back in with the pink and darken it up. And I'm just gonna color right over that red and blend in those two colors. So you get kind of like a dark pink. And I'm gonna do the same on this side. My table's shaking a little bit. I'm gonna do the same on this side. Leave that part white. Go in with my red and finish that spherical shape shading all right just some ideas of how you can color them in you can always color them in after once you fill in the whole thing and it's really satisfying to just see them all done like that all right i hope you guys are enjoying so far these markers are amazing and these pencil crayons are really really great i'm gonna use um this muji pen next these are some of my favorite ones. I'm gonna go to the next page because time flies when you're drawing, when you're doodling. And um, there's a nice big circle here. So you can fill this circle in. Um, I'm just gonna kind of go through it quickly and see how you can kind of do it on a larger scale. So I'm gonna use my thicker pen. And because it's easier to start in smaller sections, I'm just gonna kind of go and make it a little bit smaller, a smaller section to work within. And I might not finish this whole thing, but I'll just give you an idea of how you can um, customize these to be totally your own. I'm just gonna add in these lines here and you can add in lines whenever you want just to give that extra detail. And because it's Valentine's Day, I'm gonna do some hearts in here. And I'm gonna continue with this stripey kind of look. And as you can see, this pattern is the name of the game. And it doesn't even have to be pattern, but that gives you a good starting point. So because I don't really feel like continuing with that, I'm just gonna add in these lines right here and then finish this up with some more horizontal lines. Give it a bit of a wave. You can make it more geometric, like straight lines, jagged kind of corners. And this is looking kind of like a crystal or something. So on a bigger scale, obviously you have a lot more space. 
And it can be a little intimidating, but it's also a little bit more freeing. And I just love following this line. I love following this um, curvy line and kind of seeing where it brings you. It kind of has like a moving kind of wave-like feel to it, which is a fun thing to draw. Yes. I agree, Katie. It is like a manageable mandala. That's a great way to put it. <laughs> yes, and it's just pattern in whatever kind of pattern you you do, you uh, choose, really. With mandalas, they have to be kind of symmetrical and stuff, right? But you can totally use your mandala practice and use those same type of patterns and stuff and use them in your own type of doodle. Adding some half circles. And I'm just gonna fill in this spot right here. And then give it some lines. Oh, sorry, I was going too fast. <laughs> I wanna get through, okay, we have, we have a little bit more time. We can still make some cards. And when you color these in, they will really start to pop. All these lines can be different colors. And it really is like making your own coloring page. You can change it up. If you don't feel like doing the whole thing the same. This is very, kind of like an abstracty zentangle kind of practice, but it's totally relaxing and just freeing because it doesn't have to be anything. I like adding these little polka dots to just kind of filling in the space. This is basically called stippling. If you know sketching and stuff, stippling is just a way to color in, kind of shade in with little dots. It can be a little time consuming, but it looks really cool. It's fun. You can lighten them up. If you want to lighten them up, just scatter them like that. You have a bigger concentration here. And that gives you some depth. All right. OK. So hopefully that was, um, that was fun. You can also draw. I give kind of a lot of options. So if you guys want to draw in these in this, that's a really cute thing to draw too. Just doodle behind it. You have a nice kind of template. Um, you can also doodle inside letters. So this is a, a fun one. Let me try one of them for you guys. Um, letters is always fun. It's a bit of a challenge sometimes, but there's a lot of stuff going on. And you can just fill it in however you like. All right. I'm gonna switch ahead to, oops, sorry, the next page. So 740, let's start to go through some hand lettering and then you can make some cards or you'll just be prepped to make your own cards. So this is one of my favorite kind of hand lettering um, alphabets or, or styles that I've, that I've done. It's a simple serif, serif style font. And they have the little daisies that we learned, the first doodle that we learned, just wherever you like on this letter. So you can kind of start by tracing or just make your own under here and just make a nice simple A. And you can add that that let, um, little daisy wherever you want. So you can start, um, once you draw your letter, oh, let me just zoom in. Once you draw your letter, you can draw a little circle and then draw in your daisy right there. And just kind of go around. You can color that in, you can leave it. Um, let me try with the Muji pen. I love these pens, oh, they're the best. Okay, so let's do another A and you can do it right on the top if you want. One, two, three, four. 
Um, so let's just go through that. B. You can draw your little circle and just go around and fill that in. And you can trace these as many times as you want. You can print them out um, for extra practice. I love adding little botanical elements to anything really. They're just cute. And they look really cute with cards. Let's just do the eggs. This is a really simple font to do. Do one more and you can use this on your cards. If you wanna add, add you know, one word with um, some designs. Oh, I switched around my pen, okay. So here's another style of pen. If you guys have brush pens, um, you can do it with by just adding pressure. You just go one and then add pressure two. Every time you go downward, just add that pressure. Or you can just do it with a normal pen and draw your, your letter and then thicken the, the line that's going down. So if you can see up here, there's a thicker line and a thinner line, a thick line and a thin line. So you can add kind of a thicker outline to your letters. And then it makes it look a little bit more like like it's done with a calligraphy pen. It's called faux calligraphy. So kind of just color it in, draw that line in and then color it in. So this is a nice simple font you can add for your um, cards. And after that we have some hand lettering too. And there's that last page. We'll start making some cards if you guys want to start with that. So I'm just gonna get the paper ready and you can keep on doodling. Just grab that last. All right. Okay, so doodling is so much funner when you can share it with others. So let's make some cards and you can add some of your doodling elements to the cards. It's really nice to do. So I'll just show you guys how to make your own cards and cut your own cards if you guys are interested. Just be really quick. Um, so I have my cardstock and you can get cardstock anywhere. Michael's okay, so let's get this cut. So I have this, this is just a cutting, um, a cutting board basically. So this is a great way to make your own cards. So I'm just gonna cut it down to the right size. You're gonna take a whole sheet of paper cut it at the five and a half line. All right, two equal sides. This one got a little cut. I'll do you, this is a great paper cutter out of all the ones I've ever had. It hasn't broken within a few months, so that's good. 
All right, and then this is a scoring board. So you just take the, the scoring tool and I have this handily marked right there and just steadily go down the whole page like that. And then just fold it and it makes a nice clean fold. You have the pre-cut, oh yeah, the pre-cut cards are great, but I just sometimes have to make a lot. There you go, I got your own card. And we have an envelope to do as well. So that's cute. All right, so let's take some of our lettering on this page and kind of give it an idea of what we want to do. So I'm going to do um, I Love You a Latte. So you can practice with these as well. If you have a brush pen, you can use that, or you can just use your regular pen and color it in. You just trace right over this. And there's a whole extra um, bundle of, of lettering worksheets if you're interested um, on the, the sheet on the um, web page with all of the um, with these worksheets. So if you see there, there's Calligraphy Crew. That's my um, monthly subscription and I make um, lettering worksheets every month. So there's a free copy for you guys if you wanna do that. So I'm just gonna write it right here um, and I'm just gonna wing it. I could have been spaced better, but that's okay. It'll look, look good all together. I love you. Um, I'm gonna use a bigger marker. Oh, look at that, I'm not gonna fit it. No, I'm gonna fit it, yay. All right, so I'm gonna draw the little um, hearts, the candy hearts around it. Oh, I'm not really digging that one. You know, sometimes it just doesn't work. It's supposed to be more like that, yeah, there you go. And just draw that line. Well, thanks everyone. I'm happy you're liking it. Yeah, tumbles so great. And the, you know, I should use this side too to, to draw with it. These are also double sided. And oh, see what happens. I smudged it. This is why you gotta gotta check your materials. I was just decided to use that marker, but it doesn't work with the pen, with the paper. Okay, so I have a white page page here. Oh yeah, the otter half, that's really cute, right? Oh, I love that one. Okay, let's do that one. So you're my otter half. If I could draw an otter, I would. And you can just use your own writing. You can even trace the worksheets if you want onto your card. All right. So this is just a normal pen. So because I want to um, zoom in here, because I want to make it a look a little bit fancier, I'm going to just go in all these, they're called downstrokes, and just thicken them up. So all the down, the times your pen goes actually down, I'm going to thicken up those lines, just like that. And this is called faux calligraphy. It's one of the best things to do if you're first starting learning hand lettering because you don't need a fancy pen and you don't need to hold the pen in a certain way. You can just use your favorite pen 
and just color in and make it look like it's a, with a fancy pen. So here are my, and I'm gonna use um, the pink and make otter half in a, in a different font. So I'm gonna use the, um, the um, floral font. I think that might be cute. Or yeah, let's do the floral font. You're my, so it's gonna write otter. So I'm using that floral font. I'm just doing the letters first. And I hope you guys are making some nice cards. Your loved ones, your friends, your galantines will love that you made them yourself. All right, so I'm gonna add in these little florals just because. And you don't even have to add them on all the letters. Like, I think it'll look too busy. So I'm just gonna add them wherever I kind of want. Alicia, Alicia, do you have any tips on keeping lettering straight without using pencils? I see that you're very talented at that. And we do you know have what? to be asking, so. Yes, right? Yeah, I totally, oh I, oh, I can't see the questions. Let me see. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, a ruler is your best friend. I just, um, I just didn't use it. See, it's not perfectly straight. But you can always just draw that straight line and then use that to write on, just draw it really light and, and then just erase it after. So that's why it's really good. Have your eraser nearby. Yeah, you really have to use the, the ruler. <laughs> I should have used it, but I, I didn't. Um, show the hearts again. Yeah, okay. Okay, Jane, I will show the hearts again. Sorry, I saw these, these are old. Oh, that's great that you're enjoying it. Okay, so the pen I was using, I'll just go through the pens I was using. I'm using this Muji pen, the black one. I'm using this Muji marker, the double-ended one. This is my new favorite. Love it. I think I need to get all the colors. And then the Muji pencil as well, which is just great, classic. Okay. I answered. Oh, the, the paper cutter. Um, I can link that to you guys after I'm pretty, you know, I don't remember where I got it, but um, I'll let you guys know for sure. Somebody asked about tracing onto cardstock. That's a really great question. I wanted to actually go through this with you guys. So let's just quickly go through it. So if you have your card and you have your thing that you wanna trace, okay? So this is really cool. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of do this so I know where I need to do it. So draw that and then flip your paper around, okay? And then get a pencil. So you need an actual, just normal pencil. Um, let me just grab one really quick. And basically what you're gonna do with your pencil is just lightly color, just like that. Make sure you get the side of the pen, I mean, of the, like the longer side of the pencil and just get that whole area. Then you flip it over and now you basically have carbon paper on the back of this. So you're gonna just figure out where, where you want it to go. This part can be a little tricky, like trying to make it um, centered, but you can see on the outside of your page, I'll just zoom out a bit. You can see the outside of your page, right? Like right there and right there. So I'm just gonna draw that there. And then once you're, you're you have your spot, um, use something, anything that has like a hard tip, like the pencil is, is actually the best thing probably. And then you're just gonna go really hard and press down on the design and then look what happens. Okay, well, it's a little bit there. If it's not that much, just color it more, darker. And this is what I use to make wooden signs. I use it to do murals. Um, window window art, just because it's a really easy, quick way. You don't need anything special. Just need to put a little bit of, little bit of muscle into it. So when you're doing this part, you really have to press down and then see, it's right there. 
So let's just do the H again. Okay, that's kind of messed up, but you have an idea of where it is. And yeah, that can be a nice guide for you to just write it on here. So hopefully that's useful. I use that so much times. Oh, no problem. Yes, I use it all the time. Um, and when I was learning lettering, that's basically how I learned is just tracing. Okay, so let's use our black pen. And I'm just gonna go over this. Now that it's there. So even if you can't write this on your own, you can trace it. So this pen is actually Zebra Click Art. This is a really great pen. I'm, I'm, I uh, work with Zebra a lot. They're awesome. So I'm gonna thicken it now and do the um, faux calligraphy. So I'm just gonna go on all the down parts and add that thicker line. And this one, I'm gonna make a Galentine's card because I miss my friends and I'm gonna send them Galentine's. <laughs> you can even make Palentine's for your pals. <laughs> All right, so now that let's just, once you're on a cardstock, sometimes the, uh, the ink doesn't dry right away. So I'm just gonna leave that over there and it's gonna dry. And I'm just gonna finish this one up, even though it's smudged, it's okay. Um, actually, you know what? I'll just do a different design because I'm gonna do one with the, um, with the B. The B is so cute. I'm going to do it with a pencil first. All right, and let's use the ruler, make sure it's nice and straight. So I'm gonna write on this one, just something totally different. I'm gonna write, you're the bee's knees. <laughs> I'm just thinking like, what kind of, what kind of um, puns could I make with the, with the doodles that were in the, the sheet? Okay, so you're, Oh, thanks, Layla. I'm glad you like it. You're the bee's knees. Cute. So once you ink that in, you can erase it. It's like we're gonna do with this one. Well, it should be dry. There we go. Let's do a quick Galentine's Day. I should have used a ruler, that's okay. And now, because I'm going to keep this one a little simpler, I'm just going to use the first daisy doodle we learned. Oh, 
and add those, scatter them across the page. And when you're doing some patterns, a good idea is to start with threes. Threes kind of balance each other. One, two, three. Um, and if you feel like you need another one, I think right there would be good to add one more. So let's go back to this one quick and ink it up. Let's see. I'm going to use my brush pen. Oh, thank you, everyone. I'm so happy you guys are enjoying it. Doodling is just, oh, doodling is just so great. You can do it anywhere. You can do it on the couch. And making my own, making your own cards are one of the best things you can give someone. I'm telling you, they love it. If you have some better puns, <laughs> puns are always cute for Valentine's. The otter half is probably my favorite one. All right, so let's take that um, Muji pen. And give it a nice outline. Definitely, if anyone is making cards with us tonight, then please show us, tag us on Instagram and other social media. We would love to definitely see them. Oh my gosh, that is such a great idea. Yes, please, that would be awesome. We can see your great ideas. It's just so much fun to make. And uh, you can make, you know, there's, you can make cards for every occasion this year. Mother's Day's coming up. That's always a nice one. All right, so let's color in. And I was gonna do another card with the hearts and stuff and the doodling on it, but I didn't have time. So if you guys do that, I would love to see that as well. Be awesome. All right, so let's add a nice yellow color. Oh, actually, I'm gonna add gold. This um, brush pen is zebra as well, zebra. And yeah, zebra pen, extra fine brush tip. And look at that gold. If you have a gold brush, um, a gold metallic pen, gel pen, it looks great with black. Black and white, just nice and simple. Oh yes, matcha. I love you so matcha. Um, Layla, any Asian food puns for Valentine's? I love, um, I love you so much. So that's, but if anyone else has any, feel free to share some. That would be so great to hear. So I like this little bee's knees one. That's cute. And a card would not be complete without an envelope. So once you have your card all beautifully done, actually, I'm just going to erase this so you can see how it looks. Erase all the, the um, pencil. And I'm gonna use this black marker again. And I'm gonna write it to my friend who I'm giving the Valentine's Day cards to. You can always embellish with any kind of fun colored pen you have. I'm just gonna do a little background. Um, 3D kind of effect with this gold. You can kind of see it shimmer a little bit of light. Yes. 
simple, beautiful, done by hand. And we will be getting the Happy Valentine's Day card. I'll probably color those in, um, maybe in gold. And it's ready to seal and deliver. There you go. So cute. Once you start making cards, you will not stop. It's so much fun. This is really cute. This is probably give this to my partner. Oh, Ashley, I just did this lettering. Was it this lettering you were asking about? With the Tombow brush pen. It's double-ended as well. And yes, DK, I agree. I wish more people would, would, you know, share their work no matter what stage they're in. It'll always be beautiful, always be done by you. And I'm telling you, your loved ones will love that you made it for them. And if you have any kind of like a thing for the back, you can write handmade by, you know, handmade with love. This is always a great way to finish your cards. This gold pen is the Pentel Dual Hybrid Dual Metallic. I'm not sure, but a lot of fine art stores have them in, in stock and they come in an amazing variety of colors that is just really great. I love them. I'm such a pen freak. If you saw all my pens, it's nuts. This is just for right now. So many. If you guys have any questions about pens, just message me. I basically have all of them memorized. <laughs> and I think I'm just going to add some cute little hearts with this gold because gold is fun for embellishments. And it just looks great no matter what you do with it. And like I said, you can add your beautiful Zentangle doodling to the cards. I think that would just be amazing for someone to receive. And it would look great as wall art as well. <laughs> oh, that's great, Ingrid. <laughs> Pens, right? I'm so glad I could in, I could help you. <laughs> yeah, just color them in. I think it's about time now, 8, 10. Is there a link for the gold pen? There's not a link, but message me. I will send you a direct link to it because I do remember where I got it from. Um, I just have to check. I have to check. I have a, a listing where I can send you it. Yeah, there's so many pens. Oh my gosh, I love this gold. Right? Wait, let's zoom in a little bit. It's very shiny. Yeah. So much fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed making your cards. I would love, love, love to see any um, beautiful artwork that you did from tonight, whether it's doodling or cards or anything at all. Um, if you guys, there's plenty of worksheets to continue practicing with. You can fill in these doodle banks completely, look at them as a guide whenever you want to doodle again, or just have fun creating them, put them up on your wall and use it as inspiration for the next creative project you have going on. Um, and like always, these Muji notebooks are my absolute favorite, the smoothest paper I've ever, ever had. And it's just so much fun to create beautiful work with. Thank you guys. I'm so glad that you guys enjoyed it. That was so much fun. I was nervous for no reason. This was great. <laughs> you did amazing, Alicia. You always do. <laughs> thank you, Michelle. You're awesome. Oh, thank you. That was yeah. so much fun. Well, yeah, thank you everyone so much for joining us today. I, I see there's a lot of people from all the way on the other side of the world. So thank you for taking the time to sit down and doodle with us. It's It's been really fun. 
Um, I'll be sending out a follow-up email with all the links to any products that we used. Unfortunately, we only have them available in Canada, but if you do have a Muji nearby, then most of the time we have the same products. And I also linked Alicia's um, Instagram in the chat, but it'll also be available in the follow-up email. So definitely check her out, check out her work and share with us what you've made. It's it's really awesome to see what everyone makes. It's It's really nice. <laughs> it is, right? Yes. Yeah. And I'd love to see your work too, Michelle. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe I will. Maybe yeah. I'll also join in on the doodle sharing. All right. So good night, everyone. Or good yeah. night. And I hope you all have a lovely yes. night or day. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank awesome. you guys. Hope so to great. see you again all soon. Bye now. Bye-bye.